the retail version of the Asrock Aqua OC has finally arrived. That's the main board which I used in my previous tutorials to show you what a liquid nitrogen cooled i9 is capable of and that's the world record holding main board. It holds several world records with i9 cooled with liquid nitrogen and some other CPUs. So let's get right to unbox this beauty. If you open the Aqua for the first time, you'll see this nice looking envelope with the part number on the bottom right. As a reviewer, I've got a personalized envelope with my name on the bottom right. So let's take a quick look at it. It says, thank you for purchasing this product. And you get this nice card. If you bought the product in retail, you have the part number of your main board on the bottom right. And that's really cool because those boards are limited to 500 pieces only. So if you got one, you can consider yourself very lucky. And we as reviewers, we get those personalized ones and those aren't counted into the 500 pieces because that would be really unfair. Let's take a look at the board now. Well, that, that's really astonishing. It's, it's just a beauty. So, well, if you bought this product, the part number of your main board will stand in the bottom right. As a reviewer, I've got a personalized version with my name in the bottom right. That's a really cool feature and the part number is also a really cool feature. So let's take a closer look at the board. We've got an OLED right above the first PCIe slot for the graphics card. This OLED can display all the stats of your system and it's really useful. You actually always see your CPU temperature, your voltages, everything you need. And this main board has a lot more features. It features a full cover water block, which cools the CPU and the VRMs. All the M.2 slots are protected with those metal covers. We got one here, here and here. That's really nice one. So let's take a look at the backside of the board. Okay, that board is really heavy. It's really heavy. I would guess about three to four kilograms. Well, it's, it's well built. It has this full cover water block. As you can see, it's, it's really thick. And now let's take a look at the back. It has this stainless steel back plate, which is really nice. It prevents everything from getting harmed by something in the case. And it has this really nice machined backplate for the CPU block, which ensures perfect contact if the water block is mounted. And of course, we've got the beautiful Aqua logo down on the right. Okay, now let's take a look at what else is inside this box. Well, the Aqua is a board which is designed for water cooling, especially for custom water cooling. And that's why the Aqua comes with a leak sensor. It has this really nice leak sensor. Um, okay, we've got an extra O-ring. We've got this tube. I would guess this tube is to connect the sensor to our loop. Yes, it's for that. And the sensor is actually, okay, it's a tight fit. Yeah, it's a really tight fit, but the sensor is also really nice. It's full aluminum and it's digital. Obviously this board has Wi-Fi 6. That means it comes with a Wi-Fi antenna. That's this one here, nothing special. It's just the antenna. So let's take a look at the rest. And the rest is nice because we've got our thermal paste here. And not just our thermal paste, we've got our pre-cut thermal pads. And the pre-cut thermal pads are already labeled. They show you on which spot those thermal pads go when mounting. That is perfect because you can't make mistakes when mounting those thermal pads and they are pre-cut. You don't have to do any cutting by yourself. That's, that's really nice. Um, the same goes for those thermal pads. That's for the M.2. They are really good labeled. Uh, that's something that's awesome. And what, do, what else do we have? We've got some SATA cables, some screws, something for our CPU some more SATA cables, some thermal compound, and some more screws. And obviously in this box, we've got our disc with our drivers and we've got 
the guide. Yeah, it's actually the Aqua OC guide and it's the software disk. That's it for the unboxing. So now let's take an i9 and put it in this board. Okay, let's get this started. We want to install our CPU and as you might have noticed, I did leave the protective foil on it. Well, I did leave it on it because if I install the CPU, I don't want to have any scratches on the material or on my acryl. So I leave it on it and pull it off later. If you have any questions about installing the CPU, the manual is really detailed and we are going to install the CPU as stated in the manual. The first thing we need to do is to take off the full cover water block and for that we need to flip the board over and remove some screws. So, as stated in the manual, we have to remove those four screws first and then we remove those four screws. Uh, make sure you've got the right tools. Those are nice. So next are those four. So if I flip the board over again, the monoblock should be lying in the... Okay, it isn't. So, flipping it over. And what do we have to do next? We should be able to pull it off. Actually, it took us quite a while to remove the water block and that is because the water block doesn't come off that easily because it has already thermal pads on it. So those thermal pads aren't needed. Those are replacement thermal pads. Uh, I might have read the manual in advance, but I didn't. So we don't need those right now because we will use those. Those are the same thermal pads and they're in great condition. They were never used and they caused the monoblock to stick really tight on the board which was it yeah it was quite difficult to remove it but if you know it because you've read the manual and didn't make the same mistake as i you don't have that waste of time so let's put the monoblock right here and install our cpu well actually we should peel off the label before we install our cpu that's why we're going to do that And you want to keep this label because if you ever change a CPU or if you ever do anything with the board if you don't need it or if you want to send it to an RMA, you have to replace this cover. Let's install our i9. As you might have noticed, I've already lapped this i9 and that's because that's my liquid nitrogen i9. It's a really good one. CPU installation goes as with any other CPU. Just make sure you always align everything. The CPU is placed in there, it has no play. Then you can put it down and pull down the lever. Finished. So actually we're going to apply some formal paste and then we're going to put back the monoblock on it. We're going to use some high quality formal paste. I'm using the KPX and I'm going to spread it completely with the application tool. As you can see, I've applied the formal paste and the next step is that we're going to mount our monoblock. Well, you can read the warning and we have to peel off this label. The block is really heavy and it will spread the formal paste almost by itself but we obviously have to mount it. You want to place one of your hands on the block that way it won't fall off. Yet now we can flip over the board. Before installing our screws we obviously have to replace the back plate 
And now we want to install the screws in the reverse order in which we unscrew them. That means the first one is going down here, second one is going down here, third one and the fourth. I did not tighten the screws completely. I just tighten them until I feel a little resistance and now I'm going to tighten them completely in crosswise. Next step is that we are going to place in the small four screws. Make sure you've got the right tools. And that's it, we're finished. That's how far the insulation of i9 or any other CPU goes with this mainboard. It's easy and you just have to follow the guide, but you really have to know that the thermal pads are already pre-installed on this block and those thermal pads are just spare thermal pads. That means if you unmount the screws, the monoblock won't come off right away. You have to use a little bit of force to get it off. You might have to use a bit more force if it's really sticky it might depend on how tight the block was in advance since we now know that our thermal pads are already pre-installed on the mono block we're going to check if thermal pads are already pre-installed on the m.2 slots and by this chance we always install our windows that's a really heavy cover and Yes, it has a pre-installed thermal pad on it. That's really nice. So you won't have to use any of the thermal pads which come in the box. Those are spare thermal pads. So let's install our Windows drive. Now that you know how to install a CPU on this awesome board, we're going to finish this build. So stay tuned. It's the next day and we finished our build with the ASRock Aqua OC. We've got some gaming benchmarks for you and of course some productivity benchmarks. We've done some gaming tests in Assassin's Creed, Far Cry and our productivity benchmarks obviously in Adobe Premiere. So enjoy the benchmarks and take a look at this astonishing build with this beautiful ASRock Aqua. It displays all its stats on the OLED display actually all the stats you want to see and it does a great job at performing and at looking awesome. So thanks for watching and enjoy.